And this. Hey, good evening, everybody. Welcome back to our Thursday night service uh, here at Hagwish. Wow, uh, what an interesting day we live in. And just when you think it couldn't get any darker outside, spiritually speaking, it gets darker. And there's a blindness that's coming. And the church is under a tremendous attack right now of who we are. Do you know there was a recent survey uh, done amongst millennials? Uh, and 60% of them, 60% of millennials who claim and proclaim that Jesus Christ is their Lord and Savior, 60%, uh, this was quite a few people, several thousand were, in, were, um, uh, were asked about this, and 60% uh, of them say that, that Jesus Christ isn't the only way to heaven. Now, listen, brothers and sisters, it doesn't matter how the world or the church spins getting to heaven. The Bible's very clear when it teaches that there's only one name under heaven in which a person can be saved, and that's the name of, and that's Jesus Christ. And God made sure of that. And so all these other dual salvations that are out there, a lot of different teachers out there believe in, in the dual salvation. There's a salvation for the Jew. There's a salvation for the Gentile. Well, there isn't. There's one only, and it's, it's for both Jew and Gentile. But it's got to be done. It's got to be done God's way. I'm going to be reading from Ephesians. I'm going to got a bunch of verses in front of me. Uh, and uh, so tonight, you know, you may or may not want to have a paper towel with you. I don't know how this is going to go. As I was, I, I hadn't planned on it to go this direction, but just as I was reading this just a couple minutes ago, uh, right after uh, uh, prayers. I had wondered that, uh, I wonder if this is going to turn into maybe some uh, some good deliverance tonight. Do you know there was a time, brothers and sisters, that you and I were without Christ? That's Ephesians 2, chapter 12. Paul writes, he says, we were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. We were strangers from the covenants of promise, and we had no hope, and we were without God in the world. And, you know, a lot of us can remember those days. In fact, I would imagine that every single one of us can remember what it was like the day before we got saved. Some of the, some of the things that we were involved with, the things that were affecting our lives. But there's a, there's a ginormous spirit today of no hope. And Father, right now, Lord, there's 30-some there's of us that are in one mind, one heart, one accord and one faith tonight, Father. And we're all in agreement that tonight, Father, if the spirit of no hope has any stronghold in our lives, Father, if the spirit of no hope that our lives are never going to change, that we're never going to get the deliverance that we're looking for, that that our relationship, whether it's a marriage or it's a personal relationship with somebody, is never going to get better. Father, if things are never going to change and the devil is talking to anybody here tonight or that is listening to this message after, after it's being done live tonight and the devil's telling you that you're never going to change and you're going to be like this for the rest of your life, we all rebuke you right now in Jesus Christ's name. Get thee behind us. Get out of us. Loose us. and Let us go right now in Jesus Christ's name. Every spirit of no hope, because there, there was a time when we had no hope and we were without God. But the word of God goes on to say, but now in Christ Jesus, we who used to be a fire off, were made close now by the blood of Jesus Christ. Fire, thank you for that. So that spirit of no hope, we rebuke you right now. All the lies that you're telling any one of us right now or anybody that's listening, get out of us. Loose us. Stop that. We rebuke you right now. We cancel you from out of our lives. We strip you of your power over our lives right now. Every spirit of no hope. The, the world's never going to be any better for me. I rebuke you and we rebuke you right now in Jesus Christ's name. Father, your word continues to tell us in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 14, Father, is that because Jesus Christ, it says, for he is our peace. And Father, we must decrease for our Savior to increase in our lives, Father, and for us to have victory, total victory, Father, 100% victory. We, we've already got it spiritually, Father, but we're not allowing that to come and be abounding, Father, in our bodies, Father. We can do that. 
we can let your word go deep into our hearts, converting, convicting, encouraging us in all those areas, Father, that we need it because Jesus is our peace. And every spirit that's lying to us, that that's saying we're never going to have this peace, we all rebuke you right now. I rebuke you right now. Get out of us, loose us, and let us go right now for anybody who does not have this peace that passes all knowledge and all understanding. Father, your word says that we were sometimes afar off, but now we're made close, Father, by the blood of Jesus Christ, because he is our peace. And he's made both, that's Jew and Gentile, one. And he's broken down that middle wall of partition that was between us. There is no more partition between us and anybody else, and especially between us and Jesus Christ. No, we're all sinners saved by grace, but when it comes to spirituality, there's no wall. Jesus Christ, if you've asked Jesus Christ to come into your life and save you from your sins, and you are looking to Jesus Christ as your Savior, if, if you're looking to him as a policeman, if you're looking to him because you've got some fires that need to put off in your life, that's not going to work. If, if, if Jesus is your banker because you always need a few extra bucks in your pocket, that's not going to work. We need Jesus Christ who saves us from what? from sin, because it is sin that separates us from God. Sin is the big picture. Sin is what our salvation is all about. And when we get saved, he came to give us life and to give it more abundantly. And he wants us to walk. He wants us to sleep. He wants us to rest. He wants us to nap. He wants us to abound. He wants us to, to run everything in his peace. And so every spirit of no hope telling us we're never going to change you loose us right now in Jesus Christ's name. Father, your word confirms us in Colossians chapter 3, verse 4. It says, when Jesus, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also, all of us, shall appear with him in glory. Father, when we die, we're going to see Jesus Christ as he is. Right now, Father, we see through the glass darkly. But one of these days, Father, and not only are we going to see Jesus Christ, your word tells us we're going to be just like him. We're not going to be Jesus, but we're going to be just like him. There's not going to be one negative thought we'll ever have in heaven. We're not going to ever, ever again have to deal with no hope. We're never going to have to worry about things that are going on around us because there won't be any worry. It's going to be peace forevermore on that happy golden shore. And for all of us, for every Christian who's struggling in their marriage, who's struggling in their individual walk with Jesus Christ, who's struggling on their job, who's struggling with different relationships that they have going on, one of these days, all that stuff's going to be gone. But right now, we are wrestling. We wrestle against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness that's in high places. Because we often forget that this devil out there hates us. And he just doesn't hate us. He's, he's a serial murderer. He's a serial bully. He's a serial, e he is serial evil. And he wants to do everything that he can to hurt you, to hurt your children, to hurt your spouse, to hurt your family, to hurt your job, to hurt every blessing that God has ever blessed you with. The devil wants to do everything he can to, to destroy that, uh, to destroy that in your life right now. And we just rebuke him right now from off of you, from off of me, from off of us right now in Jesus Christ's name. Father, I heard all the prayer requests tonight, Father, and I heard Carol's heart, Father, and we just rebuke those spirits that are trying to destroy her. We rebuke them from off of Carol and from off of every single one of us. The spirit of despair, get out, loose us, let us go right now. Spirit of despair, move right now, get off of us, loose us right now in Jesus Christ's name. Father, your word teaches us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, starting verse 5. These are familiar verses, Father. Hopefully, they're familiar for all, every single one of us. But the Apostle Paul writes, he said that, that we are all, you and I, all of us, are children of the light. We're children of the day. That means that we can see, and we can see that we have victory. We can see that we're more than conquerors. We can see that he's given us a name that's above every name. We can see that he daily loads us down with benefits. We can see that that great work that he started, and he said he's going to perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Can you see that, brothers and sisters? See, because that's, that's what strengthens our faith. That, that's where we start exercising our faith we get stronger, and that faith starts creeping out in front of us, 
and it starts plowing down all these obstacles and all the potholes and all the things that the devil's thrown before us, that comes by our faith. And faith comes by hearing and what? Hearing by the word of God. It is so, so important. I don't know, maybe we'll get to that tonight or not, of how the word of God gives us power over so many things. But right now, over in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 5, the Apostle Paul writes, he says, we're children of the light and we're children of the day. We're not children of the night, nor of darkness. So Paul encourages us. He says, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. And every spirit that's trying to get us into a stupor, that's trying to get us to be a slumber, a slacker, we rebuke you right now from off of every single one of us tonight in Jesus' name. Every spirit of slackness, slumberness, Loose us and let us go right now. Move. Move out of us right now in Jesus Christ's name. Slackness and slumberness, every spirit that drives us to sleep when we should be standing, when we should be warring, when we should be battling, we rebuke you right now. Come off of us. Loose us. Let us go. Loose every single one of us. Every spirit that's driving us into slumber and to be, a, and to be the spirit of, of the sluggard, get out right now in Jesus Christ's name. Father, your word says to let us watch. And be sober, Father. Again, every spirit that is causing a blindness before our eyes, Father, that is destroying our faith even before we're able to exercise our faith, we rebuke you right now from off of us, from off of everybody here tonight. We rebuke you right now in Jesus Christ's name from off of every single one of us. And be sober. Every spirit that drives us to be a dry drunk, every spirit that drives us to act like, like we're alcoholics, Loose us and let us go. Every spirit of irresponsibility, loose us and let us go right now in Jesus Christ's name. Every spirit that drives us to not put our foot down and draw a line against the devil when we say the Lord Jesus Christ rebuke you, loose us and let us go right now. Move. Every spirit that drives us to not be sober in the word. Every spirit that drives us to not be sober with our relationships. Every spirit that drives us to not be sober with our finances. Every spirit that drives us to not be sober with, with our spouses. Every spirit that drives us to be sober and not with our families, we rebuke you right now. Move every spirit of drunkenness, every spirit that drives a drunkenness, get out of us, loose us right now in Jesus Christ's name. Father, because your word continues to tell us in, in verse 7 of chapter 5, because they that sleep, sleep in the night. And Father, that's where we fall. That's where we slip, in the night, in the darkness of what the devil's doing. The devil never likes to show himself, Father, so often. Father, when we think we see the devil, what we're doing is we're seeing the works of the devil, because he's already hit us He's already caused this problem and he's moved on. Father, we ask tonight, Father, in Jesus' name, that you'll help us to see him before he causes the problem, Father, that, that, we'll, that we'll be able to see that so we can pray in advance, Father, to have those things blocked and stopped, Father, in our lives. Lord, I need that in my life. I know everybody else does too, but I truly need more of that, Father, in my life tonight, Father, in Jesus' Christ, in Jesus' name. Because your word says, for they sleep, they sleep in the night. And that's where sin comes in, Father. It comes in through the darkness. It comes in through the cover of something else. Father, we rebuke every spirit that's keeping us open to this area, Father, in our lives right now, in Jesus Christ's name. This is they that are drunk and are drunk in the night, Father. In our irresponsibility, Father, it's always wrapped up in our sins. It's always wrapped up in things that the devil is trying to trick us with. Every spirit that is causing a spiritual drunkenness in our lives, loose us. Let us go right now in Jesus' name. Loose us. Loose every single one of us right now in Jesus Christ's name. And, Father, these prayers tonight that we're going through aren't just for those that are here tonight in church. They're for all, all of us, Father. They're for those that wanted to be here and couldn't. They're for those who should be here and aren't. Father, these are those that, that if they knew about us, they'd be here, Father. These are what these prayers are for tonight. So, Father, the same blessing that we get from hearing your word here, Father, we pray and ask, Father, that you would make this manifest, Father, that you would make this bring forth fruit unto righteousness in all those other people's lives tonight, Father, in Jesus' name. And, Father, your word says, but let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love. Father, every spirit of no love, Father, every spirit of inability to give and receive love freely. Loose us and let us go right now in Jesus' name. Every spirit of, of an inability to give and receive love freely. Loose us and let us go right now in Jesus' name. 
Every one of us, loose us, let us go. The Lord Jesus Christ rebuke you. Move, move, move. Every spirit that just covers our love, that just has layers, layers of demonic, get out of us, loose us. Let us go right now in Jesus Christ's name. Move out, move. Every single one of you, you got to go. Every single one of you, you got to go right now in Jesus Christ's name. Loose us, let us go. Father, we need to put on the breastplate of faith, Father. How do we get faith, Father? Your word teaches us that it comes by us being in agreement with the word of God and not just saying, wow, these are cool words, but these words, we, these words, when we read them, we say we want them, we embrace them, we grab them, and we put them as close to our lives as possible. And then we do what we can to allow those things to come inside of us and, and convict us, allow to shake us up uh, so we can come out of agreement, Father. Right now, Father, for every single one of us tonight, uh, we confess the sin, all the agreements, Lord. Now, there's there's many, Father, that we might not know, but those right now, Father, we ask, Father, we're going to take just a second here tonight, Father. Father, any agreements, Father, that you showed us or this something that we maybe need to get fessed up under you, Father, we're going to take just a second here tonight, right now, Father, and ask, Father, in Jesus' name, that you'd bring these things, Father, to our hearts and to our thoughts, Father, in Jesus' name. Loose us and let us go right now in Jesus' name. Every spirit behind all of these confessed sins, behind all these things where the devil's getting one up on us, we rebuke you right now. Loose us and let us go. Every spirit of worry, every every spirit of worry you get out of us right now. Father, your word encourages us in numerous places to not worry about anything, to don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Father, you help us now. Help us all tonight, Father, to deal with the nasty now and now, Father, with the unsaved that are in our lives, Father, with the sickness that we have amongst those, Father, that we love. Help us, Father, to deal with those things tonight, Father, with the evil that's going on in our lives tonight, Father. Your word says sufficient unto our day, Father, is the evil that we've got going on. Lord, help us right now in this church service tonight, Father, to come out of agreement with anything, Father, that we've any agreement that in whatever way, Father, whether it, whether it's been filthy communication coming out of our mouth, Father, wh whether it's through smoking pot or having other drugs in our lives or alcohol, we rebuke you right now in Jesus Christ's name. Anything, anything that the devil is tripping us up with, we rebuke you right now in Jesus Christ's name. Loose us. Let us go. Loose every single one of us right now. Let us go in Jesus Christ's name. You've got to go. Move. We cancel every plan, every plot. Everything the devil's trying to do to hurt us tonight, we rebuke you right now. Every marriage-breaking spirit, loose us, let us go. For those that are married, every marriage-breaking spirit, move out. Move in Jesus Christ's name. Move. Rebellion, rejection, rebellion, pride, the triumphant, the, the, the demonic, the, 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 the demonic thing that the devil uses, the threefold cord, the threefold cord. Father, your word teaches us that a threefold cord is not easily broken. But it can be. And tonight, Father, we break the threefold cord of sin and unrighteousness in our lives of rejection, rebellion, and pride. We rebuke you right now. Get out of us. Get off of us in whatever way you're manifesting right now. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Loose us right now in Jesus Christ's name. We break that threefold cord of sin in our lives. Loose us. Loose us all right now and let us go in Jesus Christ's name. And Father, why are we praying these prayers? Because 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 tells us to be sober. And again, Father, if we're not sober-minded, Father, deliver us tonight of the of the dry drunkenness or the drunkenness, Father, that we have in our minds. Your word says be sober and be vigilant, Father. Every spirit that's getting us to be lazy, slackness, Spirit, spirit of slackness, slumberness, loose us, let us go right now, Father, because our adversary, who is the devil, is as a roaring lion walking about seeking who he can devour. Father, we don't want these things to devour us. We're tired of them devouring us. We come out of agreement with all these spirits that are devouring our finances, devouring our relationships, devouring the blessings that you bless us with. And we turn this back upon them tonight, Father, right now, in Jesus Christ's name. Every spirit that's trying to destroy our marriages, 
We rebuke you right now in Jesus Christ's name. Move, loose us and let us go. Move every spirit that's, that's attacking the singles with this, that, or the other thing, with with eyes that that shouldn't be looking where they are, minds that are wandering. Same thing with, with the Mary. We rebuke you right now. Loose us, let us go. We confess as sin these thoughts. We confess as sin these agreements. We confess as sin, Father, that we've not always looked to you in the right way for our freedom. Free us tonight, Father. Free our minds, our wills, our emotions. Restore, Father. You've given us the ministry of reconciliation. Your word, your word teaches that you restore all things, Father, unto us. That the devil, if we'll ask, Father, you'll restore those things unto us. Restore our marriages. Restore our relationships. Restore our church, Father. Restore those things that you bless us with. Restore our finances. Restore our mind, our wills, our emotions, Father. We ask, Father. Your word says that we have not. Because we ask not. So tonight we ask, Father, that you'd restore unto us everything and anything, Father, that the devil has stolen from us or is trying to steal from us, Father. The joy, Father, your word teaches us that the joy of the Lord is our strength, Father. We we rebuke happiness, Father. We don't want happiness. We want the joy of the Lord to be our strength, Father, in Jesus' name. Father, thank you for this. But Father, it's an amazing teaching that, that you've given us in John chapter 13, starting in verse 1. Jesus is with his disciples. And it was just before the feast of the Passover. And Jesus knew that his hour was yet to come, was coming, and that he was going to depart from this world back unto his father. And having loved his own, which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. Father, Jesus came to give us life and give it it more abundantly. Jesus came to give us freely these things, Father. He wants us all to emulate these things in our lives also. And Father, with Jesus having his friends around him, he said he loved his own, which were in the world, and he loved them even to the end. Father, help us to love one another. Lord, we rebuke every spirit of cold love. We rebuke every spirit, Father, of bitterness, resentment, unforgiveness. Loose us. Let us go right now in Jesus' name. Loose every single one of us right now in Jesus Christ's name. Come on, move. Bitterness, resentment, unforgiveness. Move. The spirit of Eeyore, the spirit of Eeyore, get out of us right now. Loose us all. Loose us all. Spirit of Eeyore, move. Things are never going to change. Things are always going to be the same. It's going to rain. Move. Get out right now. Loose us all right now in Jesus Christ's name. The Lord Jesus Christ will be. But Father, Jesus loved them unto the end. And when the dinner was over, Father, when supper had ended, the devil, uh, Father, the devil was trying to, he was trying to deceive Judah, uh, Judas, uh, Father, in verse 2, it says, The supper being on the devil, having now put in the heart, the mind, Father, he, the devil put into the thoughts, into the passions, into the feelings of Judas to betray Jesus. But, Father, it didn't happen for another 25 verses. So much happened in between this time. And Lord, I don't know. I We know your word teaches that, that Judas was the son of perdition. It, 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 wasn't, it, wasn't that, it wasn't that you chose him to do this. You knew he was going to do this. And so he was, this was what he was going to do. And your word bears us, bears us out, Father. But not for us, Father. We, we're not of perdition, uh, Father. We may have been in, uh, before we knew Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. But Father, so Judas, he was struggling. Now you knew he was going to make the wrong choice, Father, and that's why you used him. Just like Father, you you use. I know that sounds bad, a bad word, Father. But those who you know, Father, that are either reprobate or that are never going to be able to come, or they're never going to be coming to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, Father, you'll use them for your glory, and and. Thank you, Father. Thank you for our salvation, Father. Thank you that we're not part of that, Father, anymore. But, Father, your word teaches that so you used Judas, and it took 25 verses, Father, and all these spirits that put into our minds to do this, that, and the other thing, to sin, to do unrighteousness, to swear. Father, it is wrong. Your word says don't let filthy communication come out of our mouth. Every spirit, Father, that drives us to swear, every spirit that trips trips us up, Father, when we get inflamed, when we get emotional, Father, sometimes our verbiage changes. We rebuke those spirits right now. Father, we need to increase, 
Father, in the strength. Father, your word teaches that whatsoever we shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever we shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Father, if we will exercise your word, we will become stronger and we won't have to give in to the swearing, to the cussing, to the, to the filthiness that comes out of our mouths. Your word says, don't let it come out. Why? Father, it probably destroys our testimony. And people that might know us or, or we portray ourselves as a Christian, when we allow this worldliness, Father, it just it just waters down. It destroys, Father. It destroys the work of Jesus Christ in our life. Every spirit that drives us to swear and cuss, get out of us right now. Filthy communication, come out of our mouths right now in Jesus Christ's name. Father, your word teaches us that Satan put into, into the mind of Judas to betray Jesus. And 25 verses later, Father, it says that Satan entered into him. Father, let that not be us. Father, the devil's trying to trick a lot of us. He's on the outside, Father. These demons are on the outside, telling us they're on the inside, driving us, tricking us, just throwing mud before us. And without having the gift of the discerning of spirits, Father, in our lives, a lot of times we don't know. We buy into and we think they're on the inside. And Father, this is how they enter into a lot of people. They already convinced them. I'm talking about believers, Father, and, and Christians who believe the demons can be inside of Christians. Father, they believe that the demons have uh, something your word says in Ephesians 4, 27, to not give place, don't give residence to the devil. Well, so many of them, Father, are on the outside, but they try and trick us to believe they're on the inside to get us to do what? to open ourselves up unto them. We rebuke you right now in Jesus Christ's name. Move. Every spirit of subtlety. This is what the Apostle Paul was so in fear about. This is a subtlety that 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 defiled and deceived uh, Eve would also do the same thing unto us. So we rebuke you right now in Jesus Christ's name. In fact, Father, 2 Corinthians 11 verse 3 teaches us that. Paul says, but I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, that our minds should be corrupt, Father, from the simplicity that's in Jesus. Every spirit that is trying to corrupt our minds, we rebuke you right now in Jesus Christ's name. Move. Every spirit that is trying to corrupt our thinking, loose us and let us go. Every spirit that is trying to trick us to think that the demons are on the inside when many times they're on the outside, loose us, let us go right now in Jesus Christ's name. Every spirit that drives us to be religious, every religious, every every. Uh, every religious spirit, move right now. Get out of us. Every religious spirit, you loose us, let us go right now in Jesus Christ's name. Move. Striving to be holy through the flesh. Loose us, let us go right now in Jesus Christ's name. Father, your word says that there's a simplicity that's in Jesus. And it's so simple, Father. It's so simple. We make it difficult that Jesus Christ did it all. Every spirit that deceives us, every spirit of deception, Move. Every spirit of passivity of the mind, the will, the emotions, loose us, let us go. Move. Every spirit of passivity, loose us, and let us go right now in Jesus Christ's name. Move. The Lord Jesus Christ rebuke you. Move. Move. Father, your word teaches us that there's another way that Satan gets uh, an advantage over us. Father, that's over in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, starting in verse 9. Uh, the Apostle Paul is teaching, and he says, I want to show you some proof. He says, so the thing that I, for, he says, if I forgive anything, verse 10, he says, I'm going to forgive it in the name of Jesus Christ. So I'm going to do that for Jesus' sake. He's not going to do that for the people. Father, he's going to do that for Jesus. Father, if we have unforgiveness, bitterness, resentment in our hearts, Father, Father, your word teaches us that we need to forgive unto the Lord, Father, and then we can forgive unto people. But your word says that Satan will get an advantage over us. Every spirit that has an advantage over us because of unforgiveness, because of bitterness, because of resentment. Father, your word teaches that, that while we were still sinning, our Savior went to the cross. And when he looked up to heaven with all those sinners in front of him, with all those that hated him, Father, with all those that mocked him, with all those that wanted to kill him, with all those that wanted to kill your son, Father, your son looked up to heaven and said, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. Father, we must forgive others because they don't know what they're doing either, Father. We did. If we would have known, every one of us here tonight, Father, if we, if you were to, if we were to do a survey, Father, every single one of us would say the same thing. 
that if we had any idea what what was going on in our lives, we would have been saved years ago. But it wasn't, Father, until you opened up salvation to us, Father. And we thank you for that, Father. And Lord, just a couple more verses here to go over, uh, Father, and then we can all we can all rest from the service tonight, Father. Maybe a little clearer, a little cleaner, Father, from these things that the devil's trying to do uh, in our lives. Uh, and so, Father, over, uh, Lord, over in uh, John chapter sixteen, <coughs> come on, me in Jesus' name. Your word says that. Well, Jesus is talking here. Uh, and because he talked to his disciples about who he was, they thought, well, we get it. Of course we get it. See, so many times, Father, I do the same thing. I'll read something from your word, and I'm like, I get it. And then two seconds later, I find out that I really don't get it. But Jesus asked him, he says, do you really believe that I came from the Father and that I'm going back? He says, behold, the hour cometh, and it, it is now. Well, Father... The hour was coming, and it was at that very time, 2,000 years ago, Father, when, when Jesus was, was, had his disciples around him and said that some of you are going to be scattered. You're going to be fragmented. You're going to be driven away. Your, your standing, your footing is not going to hold. And, and, and people are going to be scattered. Every man to his own, and they're going to leave him alone. Now, they're talking, Jesus is talking about that at that time, but Father, the very second that we think we couldn't leave Jesus, Father, we've already left him. So tonight, Father, every spirit that is working on us, Father, this devil right now is working overtime tonight, Father, to get us to not align our lives, Father, to John chapter 7, verses 38 and 39, that teach us, Jesus says, that we must believe on him as the scripture teaches, as the scripture writes about him, because then out of our belly shall flow rivers of living water. And this was in reference to the Holy Spirit. So every spirit of deception, every spirit that is driving us to not line our lives up, every spirit that drives us to do our own thing, our own do it, do it yourself religion, come out of us right now in Jesus Christ's name. Move out, move, move. All the spirits that drive us to put conditions on us forgiving, to put conditions on why we why we will or will not allow. Father, many of our wills are taken captive by Satan and his will. Father, we want to break his will from off of our lives right now in Jesus Christ's name. So we confess this sin, Father, we rebuke. Father, if we don't remember, if it's important for us to remember and we need to fix it, Lord, help us tonight. Bring that to our minds, Father. Bring that to our memories so we can let go of those things because many of us, Father, are taken captive by Satan's will tonight. And we want to rebuke that tonight, Father, from off of us and Father, from off of everybody here uh, in the church tonight, Father. And Lord, just pray that uh, tonight, Father, as we close down the service, that everybody will continue to receive the deliverance, Father, that they're seeking tonight, Father, while they're while, before they go to bed, while they're asleep, Father. I pray, Father, for angels of protection around every single one of us, Father, so that no evil or harm can come to us in any way, shape, or form, Father. Any demons that have to be bound up, Father, we bind them right now with chains and fetters of iron, Father. We execute upon them, Father, all the judgments that are written in your word, Father, because this honor has all the saints. And Father, we want to, we want to, some people box them up, Father. Some people do other things, Father. I put them in caves. And every spirit, Father, that is bound up, Father, that needs to be separated, Father, we put them all in caves, just as David did, Father, to those kings, uh, Lord. And, and he had to go out to battle, Father. He didn't have time to deal with those kings at that time. So he sealed them up, Father. We pray that these demons, Father, tonight that are still loose in our lives would be sealed up so they can't hurt us. They can't hurt our marriage. They can't hurt our relationships. They can't hurt and drive us back to this old life, Father, that you've delivered us from. You've healed us from those things. The devil's just, he's just trying to claim us back for his own. We rebuke every spirit that's trying to claim us back for his own right now in Jesus Christ's name. And Father, we seal these things up. And inside those caves, Father, we ask for a couple of angels, Father, one to preach the gospels uh, to these demons, Father, the other one to have the sword of the Lord, Father, with the blood of Jesus Christ on both sides of the sword, sticking and stabbing, Father, and torturing those demons. And Father, at that time, just when David came back and he let those kings out of the cave, Father, at that time, he then did what? He killed them, Father, 
he put his he put the sword to their neck and he cut their heads off father and we pray father at the next time father that we're going to get deliverance whether it, sovereignly father uh, after the service tonight tomorrow in the days ahead father however and what whatever it is and however you do it father uh, we pray that these things that were bound up father would only be loosed uh, when they're going to be destroyed father so they can't hurt us uh, anymore father fill us with the fruits of righteousness father loose unto us father wisdom knowledge understanding direction discernment discretion father let let the fruit love joy peace long suffering gentleness faith goodness temperance and meekness father just be manifested in our lives father and that wonderful truth father that is that we uh, that we are taught father in philippians chapter uh, chapter four i believe it is father. i think it's 410 uh philippians 4 8 father finally for all of us tonight father what sort of things are true what sort of things are honest what sort of things are just what sort of things are pure what sort of things are lovely what sort of things are of a good report father if there's any virtue father if there be any praise on those things father your word encourages us to think on those things, Father. Help us to think, because all those things are the victory that you have for us tonight, Father, in Jesus Christ. And Father, for those that are here tonight not knowing Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, Father, all you have to do is ask Jesus to come into your life and save you from your sins. And remember, well, he's saving us from sin, and that's the most important thing. And if you never ask him to come into your life, ask him to come in tonight. And when he comes in, he'll start to change you from the inside out. Your Christianity doesn't have to be a garment that you put on. It'll be a little bit slower growth, but in the long run, you'll be able to stand in, in that evil day the Word of God teaches us. But if you're driven to harass and torment, and this is producing a compulsive behavior in your life that is that is slowing down, stopping, or turning around your spiritual growth and progress, well, this is what demons, of course, are doing in the life of the believer. They're after you. They're after me. They're after us. Don't worry about the world. You couldn't get a demon in the world with a crowbar. They're after every single one of us. But Jesus Christ gave us remedy for evil spirits. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe. In his name, cast out devils. Now, we also believe the gifts are for today. We also believe that God heals today because he tells us in his word that he doesn't change. So what a great service tonight, brothers and sisters. Some of you I'll see on Saturday at the men's uh, prayer meeting. Some I'll see uh, Sunday. I don't think I'm going to be able to make it uh, to the church. Uh, but so what I will see everybody on Zoom, I love y'all, and I'm going to go ahead and close the recording and leave the church open.